everybody wants to be successful. Everybody wants to know that they are doing something. Something for you, for your family, for your planet. Now, if you Google that, you find that uh, in one website that is called soulsalt.com, they offer you a suggestion. What is success for you, to you? I just read the website. Success is something that you have to define for yourself. And no one can do it for you. Success could mean a sense of giving back to the world and making a difference. It could mean a sense of accomplishment and career progression. It could mean being able to do the things you love. It could mean being able to provide the best possible of bringing to your children. It's entirely up to you. And a one-size-fits-all approach is impossible. So that is what that website says. Now let's look at success, what it could be. Achieving a goal, finishing what you started, reaching the top or the end of an assignment. We could give many examples of it. A marathon runner reaching the finishing line and crossing. A student passing his exams. An apprentice becoming his or her own patron. Now, how would you measure success? I suggest that you could be crossing a visible landmark. Visible or invisible, but something that you could see for yourself. Getting confirmation by others. For example, when you finish a diploma or a degree, it's recognized by the institution that hosted you and taught you, and you get a certificate. You can also get a witness to say, yes, I saw that person reaching the finishing line. You can also have a personal feeling of satisfaction, elation. Someone that decided to climb a mountain arrives at the mountain top and, wow, I've made it. What are the conditions for success? First of all, you have to set a realistic goal. When I was uh, in secondary school, mid-secondary school, I was 15, one of my classmates was really in love with Spanish. She just dreamt of studying Spanish at university level. By the time we reached university, she tried she registered for Spanish degree. And at the end of the first year, the lecturers called her and said, I'm afraid <laughs> you may not make it. We suggest that you have too much to cope with. You didn't start well with your studies of Spanish and it would be better for you to do, uh, you know, uh, humanities or something like that. So you have to be realistic. Secondly, you have to investigate what it takes before you start. The Bible talks about someone that decided to build a house, but he had not envisaged the cost of the f building the foundations, and he could not finish the house. In Nigeria, there are many houses like that that lived unfinished because the cost was be beyond what the person could do. Also, you have to prepare to meet obstacles, you know, because the obstacles will be there. If you run a marathon at a point, you will get tired, especially after the mid-marathon. You start gasping for breath. Your legs feel like giving up. Also, don't fight alone. Never fight alone. Look at the same picture of Marathon. Along the way, there are water stations where marathoners can grab a, a bottle of water, gulp it or pour it upon themselves and continue. Stay focused is very, very important. 
for anything you do, whatever it is, you have to stay focused. If you are repairing a car, you cannot just sn sneak out for doing something. At the end of the day, the client will come, is my car not ready? No. If you do a translation, it's very tedious, it's like painful job sometimes, and you feel like, oh, let me go out and, uh, you know, have a nap. That will not really help you unless you really need it. So stay focused and maintain the pace. Usually we are helped by deadlines. But if you don't have an external deadline, you have to fix yourself some deadlines. Say, okay, I have this to do. Let me decide that I will finish it be before the end of the week or before the end of the month or before the end of the year. Whatever it is, whether it's unpacking after a, a move or whether it's writing a book, whatever you do, yeah, stay focused and maintain the pace. Also, make sure you define that success as it is for you. Others cannot define your success and it may not be always visible to others. You don't need to splash it on social media. Your success is your success. Do not let others define it. I remember when I was still teaching in the university and I was having a struggle. My department wanted me to do something as research topic and I didn't want. I knew it was, what they were asking me was wrong and that they should have been happy having hired me past 50, that I could continue what I'd been doing all my life. And because they, they were not there, there was a clash. For them, my success was going the way they were showing me to. And my success for me was not that at all. It was continuing, pushing on with the research I was doing. So every year I had a clash party <laughs> with my supervisor. But eventually, I had my way because it was God's way and it worked. Also, invest all you have in the fight. Get equipped and give it all. Give it your best. God said, work for me and not for your boss. Whatever your boss gives you to do, the task you have for your job, do it with all your might not for the person, but for the Lord. Although it will benefit the, pers the per person and you get rewarded. Also for a Christian, success is fulfilling God's purpose for your life. How do you know that purpose now? Someone asks, how do I know? You will know, sometimes even early, you will discover that you have some talents, some skills, some people are magic with mathematics. Some others learn languages just like that, like you drink water, like a sponge. So you will discover your gifts, your talents. People are go good with their hands and they will do fantastic plumbers or mechanics or electricians. Whatever God has invested in you, as you discover it, and you find out that you do it easily, that will be a sign. For example, when I was in secondary school, I used to be completely terrible at mathematics. And one, one uh, year, when I was uh, 16, I had a mathematics teacher that told me, hmm, I've seen that all you get is two, per two, two over 20, three over 20, who were marked over 20. And she said, well, at the end of the year, you get 20 over 20. So I said, wow. I started cycling to our place several kilometers away for free private lessons. I was struggling, investing all my time to do this mathematics, algebra and all, geometry. And it took me ages to do one problem. When, one, when I was working in my own language, French, studying it, within the same time I had done 
at least five or six exercises. So at the end of the year, I got a good mark in maths, but it was really painfully received, painfully you know, achieved. And I knew it was not my line. So you will know. And then you find a, a desire in your heart to do a particular thing. And your circumstances will also dictate somehow what you are going to do in life. And then you may also get a strong sense of God's calling. So, in the end, what will happen? When you finish whatever goal you had, whether a goal for one hour exercise, or climbing a mountain top, or knitting a sweater, or whatever it was, when you finish, there usually is a deep sense of fulfillment, peace. Wow, I've made it. A fruit also, whether that fruit is a diploma, a degree, a publication, a production, a machine, a film that you produce, a job, a documentary, whatever it is, there is a fruit. If you cook, then there will be a dish, a, a cake, something that you have done and you are proud of it. There will be also, and that is very important, a positive impact on your own environment. It has nothing to do with money. It is not directed towards yourself, but it will please both yourself and the others. And you'll be blessed.